This is Roger with Crosscut in Tucson, Arizona. We're selling this truck as a 2002 Ford F-250 crew cab short bed. Um, it's a 7.3 turbo diesel, uh, 4x4, XLT. Has 230,875 actual miles. It was a uh, theft recovery purchased directly from USAA, and it is on a clear title. Um, we brought it here to Tucson. All it needed was a new steering strut. It had a little ding in it um, and a detail. Really pretty truck, obviously really well maintained, came from California, um, and uh, hell of a rig, hell of a rig. Um, anyway, I'm going to walk around it, if I see something cosmetically, I'll, the only thing I've seen cosmetically, this is probably the straightest, cleanest 230,000 mile vehicle ever, especially a truck, but all I've ever seen really is just a couple touch-ups, like a touch-up here and here, I mean, when we're looking at touch-ups, I have much going on. But this is the steering stabilizer strut right there. That's brand new. That's the only thing we had to do to it. Um, hell of a truck. They put some nice 20s on it. Those are 20s. That pattern is a King Ranch wheel. And it's a 20 inch. And it's sitting on Michelins that are probably 50% tread. Um, undercarriage looks outstanding. Um, the purpose of this video, however, isn't for me to say, oh, this is the greatest truck ever, although it's a hell of a truck. <laughs> um, it's to uh, find what's wrong, accentuate what's wrong, not what's right. Um, it's really easy to tell you how great something is. There's a little couple of touch-ups right here. But uh, really what we want to do is find out what's wrong, show you what's wrong, and that way you can make a good decision. The rear tires look brand new. These are Michelin's. So the fronts are about half tread, so we probably put these on very recently, and those are probably 50% tread. And he spent a fortune. Those are expensive tires, too. Obviously, you have a fifth wheel bracket and a plug right there. Got another plug here if you want to pull your trailer from the hitch. I really like this truck. These are nice, nice tires. Boom, boom, boom. Nothing going. I think this is where I saw something. Looks like he opened the door, closed the door on something. There's a little bit of a line of touch up here, a little touch up here, and here. That's about it, man. This thing is stone cold pretty. All right, let me get this thing going so I can get some air conditioning going because it's freaking 9,000 degrees. Wait for the glow plugs. There we go. 230,877 miles on it. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. All right, before we go under the hood, we'll look at this stuff. This is the only thing we had to buy was a steering stabilizer strut for $40. That's it. Here's your... Uh, auto check this is the vehicle history for it okay there's your VIN. that was it that was the gas uh the fuel light coming on so i need to go stop and get some fuel for it probably on this video i will all right no accidents no damage found this will all have a link that you can click on theft re theft record obviously it was stolen so there's that bum, bum, bum. You can click on this uh, link in our ad and look at it yourself. A lot of people want to have me explain things to them, how it works. But uh, one thing that's obviously vehicle report is a theft recovery, okay? Um, one of the things that's obvious is this guy loved this truck. <laughs> um, let's see, car gurus. We look for comps to see how we're going to how we're gonna price it so you can understand how we come up with a price. Um, I did this about an hour ago, 8, 10 of 22. I ran all these comps. 01 XLT 20,950 with 261,000 miles, so more miles. Uh, let's see, that's today, Car Gurus. This is in Tempe up the road. This is a maroon one, 19,999 with 250,000 miles, four wheel drive, 7.3. And this is the best, this is the, this is probably the scariest comp because it's from Wyoming, which means it's got to be rusty underneath. Positive, it's rusty underneath. Um, 810 of 22, Car Gurus. 
they have 16,000 on it uh, with 238,000 miles. So basically the same, uh, about 8,000 miles more on their truck with diesel and 4x4, but uh, it's Wyoming. And I will never buy another Wyoming truck again. So, <laughs> pretty sure what that one looks like underneath, and it isn't pretty. Whereas this one is. <laughs> all right, first of all, you've got a Ford stamp here, so you have the original fender. Let's see, you got your stickers where they belong, which you want. You got an aftermarket air box right there. Um, let's see, Ford stamp here, Ford stamp here. Should be another one there, and it is. See how much blow by it has, and they all have it. And let's see what it, except this one. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow, that guy really took care of this truck. No blow by at all. That never happens. And I left the doors locked, but because I've clapped myself out 10,000 times in these trucks, now what I can't remember is if this is a window lock or not. I think that's unlocked. Let's see what happens. Let me try this door to make sure. Nope. <laughs> Boom. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, let me go back to the other side. I've locked myself out in these videos so many times that I've learned to leave the driver door open. Somebody replaced the light switch at some point recently. I drove it uh, a couple nights ago, so I know it works fine. And it does not smell like smoke. It smells great. No smoke smell at all. Older vehicles, people always want to know about that. Looks like uh, he had very few friends because I don't think anyone got in it other than the driver and you didn't weigh much because when you do you break down that bolster the seat bolster and that thing is, looks brand new looks great man it's hot man even these buttons are already hot already all right, in, out, up, down, other side, out, in, down, and up. Perfect, you got tilt wheel here. Bum, bum, bum. Seat bolster, there's a little bit of wear in this seat bolster, but not bad, man. For what I'm used to, when I get these things, generally, almost every time, these things are just completely torn up. Radio. CD player, old school cassette player. Break out your cassette collection, old guys, like me. There's your windshield wipers. Overdrive off and on. Go to neutral. Go to four low. Now we're in low range four by four. And again, my next stop is definitely going to be the, uh, the, uh, gas stations that's drive and four low reverse and four low all right now we'll go to neutral now we're gonna go to four high low range goes away now we're in four high definitely a little quicker now and reverse this is in four high all right neutral now we're gonna go to two-wheel drive and go for a ride. All right, if you come to Tucson to drive this truck home, you'll pay the following. You'll pay your state tax rate, whatever that is, plus our city tax of 2.7% and the $250 dog fee. If you pay by wire and ship out of state, all you're gonna pay is the group upon price and that's it. No tax, no dog fee, nothing. Once you receive full payment, we will fill out the title with your name or your company's name and address. We will sign it off to you. We'll scan it into your online file and we will mail it to you. We even scan in the envelope we mail it in, all right? Um, you will have the uh, vehicle shipped 
to your location, the title will already be in your mailbox before the shipper shows up with the truck. Um, in fact, that's never not happened. But uh, if you need help with uh, is shipping, let me know early in the transaction. I can do it for you. We can roll the price of the shipping into the price of the vehicle. Um, so you only make one payment or you're welcome to do it yourself, okay? Obviously, once the truck shows up, you take the title that you have in the mailbox and the truck itself and uh, go get plates. It's very simple. Uh, deposits $500. Once we have a deposit, we have a deal. Until then, it will stay for sale. So please make sure that you get your deposits in, right? Um, last part of every video, I say the same thing every single time, and I have for 15 years on every single car we've ever sold. Just watch all the videos we have online now. Right about the end of every video, I say this. We don't have bottled water with our name on it. We don't have a salesman to pay. We don't have uh, a fancy location. You know, basically our road looks like we're a fourth world country. You know, potholes everywhere. We have razor wire on our fence, night vision cameras, crackheads walking around. Fortunately, the cops basically live in front and behind our business, so we don't have to worry about that, you know, about the crackheads getting in the cars. But it's not very attractive. Yeah, because it's not very attractive and because our uncle charges a, a, a dollar a year for our location, that's our rent, one dollar a year. We don't have the bills they have at the auto mall. The auto mall is a mile away exactly the direction we're going. We're going east on Wetmore right now. You'll run into the, the uh, auto mall in about a... Eh, about three quarters of a mile. There, you gotta pay for all that stuff. You have you know, some places to have attendants serving scones and lattes, and it's really neat, you know? I mean, I don't know how they make a living other than the fact they have to crush you on every vehicle they sell. Um, they also include five to $700 for future repairs. We don't do any of that stuff. We don't have all that stuff. We don't need to give you all that crap to get you to do something. We just give you the truth. Carfax, auto check in this case. Um, all the information that we have about it and uh, let you make a good decision good informed decision and uh, they can't do that all right they have to crush you and they include five to seven hundred dollars for future repairs in every deal so that if something breaks you'll come in pissed off because you paid a fortune and they'll say yeah we should fix it and if they can't fix it with the five to seven hundred dollars they give you your money back and do nothing to the truck except sell it to somebody else that's what they do we don't. We give you all your saved money from not having salesmen to pay and lattes to buy. And one of those places has a game room. All that crap. We save you the money. That's why we're cheaper than them. Because we can be. Okay? But there's one trade-off. At the end of this, you're the owner. Day one, minute one of owning this truck, you're the owner. When something breaks, you will be fixing your truck. Okay? We're not writing a check for anything. Okay? If you want us to write a check for something... Add $2,500 to our negotiated price and you can have, you know, six month warranty, which is stupid because this truck is fine. You know, take care of it. Don't put gas in it instead of diesel. We've had that guy come through the pipe more than a few times and then call us and tell us how the truck is all jacked up and then we take the tank out. Oh, it's because it's got gasoline in it. <laughs> <You're> dope. <laughs> you know, so I, we've seen it all. Uh, put gas in it. Don't drive it into a lake. Don't crash it. Uh, change the oil once in a while. Filters once in a while. And these 7.3s go forever. And this thing runs great. I'm going to put some fuel in it right now. Because um, it's a little thirsty right now. Anyway, there's, your, uh, there's all your gauges after our little ride. So you can see them up close without any glare. It's freaking really hot right now, too. Temperature out is ridiculous. Like... It's about 103 and the humidity is about 50 percent mexico is about 60 miles directly south of us which is that direction and even though it looks really sunny and it's about one in the afternoon here in tucson on thursday i think it's the 11th or 10th one of those two um it's gonna pour rain in a couple hours people say how do you know that because i've lived here my whole life third generation tucsonan and when it's humid and nasty like this it's gonna rain hard Anyway, this is a really pretty truck. I just noticed one thing. There's, oh shit handles missing right there. And it looks like they put a new headliner in it because this looks really too good for an original headliner. And so there was probably a handle here too. So he covered that up. He didn't put that one back, but I would prefer a brand new headliner over a handle any day because 
they're notorious for that. It's got a couple uh, exhaust temperature gauge and a, and a turbo gauge. These things notoriously are incorrect. They work when I was driving it, but who knows, man. I would not go by these things as like the Bible because they're aftermarket. Um, what else? It's also got this Banks brake thing on it, um, like an exhaust brake. When I turn it on, usually when you have an exhaust brake and you turn it on and it does light up, you'll get a little bit of pull on the, on the RPMs um, and you, you're not here. So I'm guessing that it probably was stolen we're not even going there on, on aftermarket stuff like that, like air suspension, bake, brakes and, and radios, stuff that is really ancillary to the vehicle, extra, these gauges. All we care about is that it runs and drives good and that the stuff that makes it a truck works. You know, the window, the locks and the stuff, that stuff, if it's got it, it's got it. If it doesn't, it doesn't, okay? Uh, I think that's about it. I'm gonna put some fuel in this thing. Thank you for your time.